Good morning children. In today's class, we are going to learn about a small topic, how plants and animals depend on each other. So let us see, okay? So plants and animals depend on each other for their survivals. Plants take something from the animals as well as animals also take something from plants. They both are interdependent. Now let's see how. So let us see first how animals depend on plants. The food made by the plants are eaten by many kinds of animals. So they depend on plants. And what they also depend on plants for what? For shelter as well as oxygen. So we all know how they get oxygen. Animals, we know the process of photosynthesis here, like how the plants make they intake the carbon dioxide for making the food and they release what to the atmosphere? They release oxygen, which is in turn taken by the animals. So animals also inhale oxygen and they release carbon dioxide again in the atmosphere. That same the plants absorb from the air, the carbon dioxide. So animals are depending on plants for the food as well as for just shelter and as well as for the oxygen mainly. So now let's see how plants depend on animals. So plants use carbon dioxide that are released by the animals in the atmosphere that's taken by the plants for the process of what? For making food. Plants depend on animals such as insects and birds to produce fruits with seeds. And animals also help plants to disperse seeds. You might have seen in the jungles when a fruit is eaten by the birds or suppose the animals, what do they do? They don't sit and uh, eat in the same place, they take that fruit and move on to other places. Likewise, they help to disperse the seeds in the other parts also. Likewise, it helps that plant to grow other places also. Okay? So likewise, plants and animals depend on each other. So children, it was a short topic, so we all know how they both interdepend on each other. So now let us see, you can all take page number 30 here in your reader. See, we can see here many plants which are used in cooking help in digestion. Many plants which are used in cooking purpose, they help in our digestion. Now let's see what and all plants we use for cooking purpose. We have medicinal effect also, all this coriander, mint, fenugreek, curry leaves, Ginger, then cinnamon, cardamom and cloves are some of them which we all use in our cooking purpose, right? So these are the things and they have also shown the picture of it. So you can go through it. So children, now we will move on to the exercise of this chapter. Okay, so let us all take page number 32 and along with this you can uh, take your pencil as well as your general science notebook. Okay, we, so that we can write down the answers. Okay. Let's see the first one. The first exercise is tick the correct options. First one, what is that? Plants make their food by using the options are sunlight, soil and oxygen, chlorophyll, oxygen and air, sunlight, water, carbon dioxide and chlorophyll, chlorophyll and water. So what is the correct option? You can tick, put a tick in front of it in the box, inside the box. So I hope you have chose the correct answer. Now let's see the second one. Once we have discussed all these five, we will discuss the correct answers for the same. Second one, the Venus flytrap is, is it an insectivorous plant, a total parasitic plant, a partial parasitic plant or a dead plant? Third one, the tiny openings on the leaf are called what? Is it veins, stomata? tubes, midribs. You can tick the correct option. Fourth one, leaves can make food for the plants because they have, is it chlorophyll, starch, sugar or veins? And now fifth one, a total parasitic plant cannot make food because it lacks stem, flowers, branches, or chlorophyll. 
So, I hope you have uh, ticked the options here. Let us see the 5 correct answers for this. Okay? First answer is what? We all know plant make their food by using what and all? Water, sunlight, carbon dioxide and main is chlorophyll. Right? So, tick that option. Second one, Venus flytrap is what? An insectivorous plant. We have learned it, right? Next answer is what? The tiny openings on the leaf, you remember? If you remember in the PPT, I have shown you uh, the picture of that stomata. So, the correct answer for this is stomata. The tiny pores are called as stomata, which is on the leaf. Next one, the correct answer is chlorophyll. Okay, fourth one. Fifth one, again chlorophyll. So, hope you all have corrected the answer. Now, let us move on to the second exercise. That is what? Correct the following sentences. See here, the sentences are given, but few words are wrong. So, we have to correct it. We have to write the correct words. Let us read the first one. Leaves have a yellow colored pigment called chlorophyll. Is it a yellow colored pigment or any other color? What is the correct answer? So, how do we have to write the correct answer? We, I will do the first one for you. The rest you can do it. The first one will be what? Leaves have a green colored pigment called chlorophyll. Okay, that is the correct answer. So, you have to change yellow and you have to write green. Okay, likewise you can write the answers for each. So, next I will read and you can try writing the answer. A total parasitic plant has chlorophyll. Okay. Third one, carbon dioxide enters a plant through the tubes present in the leaf. Think whether this statement, the sentence which is given is correct in that a few, uh, one or two words will be wrong. So, you have to correct it. Fourth one, plants need only sunlight to make their food. Only sunlight, is it they need only sunlight? Think and write it. Fifth one, plants store excess food only in their roots. Sixth one, plants do not depend on animals in any way. And seventh one, the colored leaves of crotons do not have chlorophyll. So, these are all what we have learned. So, now I hope children you have uh, written the answer for this, but let us discuss all the seven together now. Let us see the correct answers. For the first one, what we have to write? Leaves have green colored pigment called chlorophyll which we have I have discussed with you. Second one, just look into your reader also, a total parasitic plant has no chlorophyll. Remember, total parasitic plants do not have chlorophyll, they depend on other plants. Third one, carbon dioxide gas enters a plant through the stomata present in the leaves. So, which words which is dark, you have to correct it and write in your reader. Let us see the next one, fourth one. Plants need sunlight, chlorophyll, carbon dioxide and water to make their food, right? It is not only the sunlight, they need all the food, then only they can process their food. Now next, plants store excess food in their roots, stems, leaves, fruits and seeds. It is not only in the roots, but they store excess food in stems also, leaves, fruits and seeds also. The next one, plants depend on animals for carbon dioxide and the last one is the colored leaf of crotons have chlorophyll which we have learned it. Now, I hope you got the correct answers. Now, let us see the next one, third one, it is group the following food. We eat according to the edible plant parts. So, options are given here as well as we have the edible part of the plants. Accordingly, we have to write the correct options in the under the correct column. So, children you can pause the video and you can try filling this column with the correct option. Once you are done, please come back, we will discuss the same. So, I hope you have written the answers. Now, let us discuss and see whether it is right or wrong. The first one, roots. Under roots, what will be the correct options coming? Carrot, turnip and radish. Okay. Next one, under stems, ginger, sugar cane, potato, leaves, cabbage and lettuce, flowers, broccoli, cauliflower and fruits, orange, apple, seeds, it is rice and wheat. 
So, hope you all have noted. Now, let us move on to the next exercise that answers the following questions in one sentence. So, let us see the first question. List the factors that plants need to make food. What they need to make food? Chlorophyll, carbon dioxide, water and sunlight are needed to make food in plants. The second one, I will read the second question. What happens to the excess amount of food made by the plant? The plant uses whatever food it needs and what it does with the rest is stored in their roots, stems, leaves, fruits and seeds. Okay. Next one, third question. How does air enter the leaves? How does it enters? There are tiny holes called stomata on the leaves, okay, surface of the leaves through which air enters the leaves. Fourth question, name a total and a partial parasitic plant. So, a total parasitic plant is dodder and a pa partial parasitic plant is mistletoe. Okay. So, we are done with this one sentence answer. Let us see the fifth one answer the following questions in two or three sentences. Here what we need to do we have to describe an activity to show that veins help in carrying water up in the plant. So, this we have already seen the activity. Let us see what is that activity to show that veins help in carrying water up in the plant. How take a white carnation or a balsam flower with a stem and make a fresh slanting cut at the edge of the step. Take a vase with water, tap water and add a little food color to it. Now place the flower in the vase and observe the flower after a few hours. So you will observe the colored water in the petals. So it shows that the veins help in carrying water from the roots till whole parts of the plant. Okay. So, children we have discussed the fifth exercise, the first question we have discussed, the answer is we have taken from the same reader what we have learned and hope you all have done the activity also. Now next is again an activity, mention the steps of iodine test, if you remember we have gone through it in the class also for this question, let us see what is the answer. Take some cooked rice in a container and add few drops of dilute iodine solution on it to the rice. So, what we will see the rice turns bluish black because it has starch. So, this is the steps of iodine test. So, this is the answer for the second one. Now, let us see the third question that is how do plants depend on animals? It is very simple. Plants make their food with the help of carbon dioxide that the animals breathe out. Plants depend on animals such as insects and birds for what to produce fruits with seeds. Also animals help plants to disperse these seeds. Now let us see the fourth question, how does a pitcher plant catch insects? The pitcher plant has a pot like structure right, we have seen which is called as a pitcher with nectar inside it. The nectar attracts insects and as the insect enters the pitcher, it closes trapping the insect inside itself and there are hair like structures inside the pitcher and when disturbed by the insect they close the opening of the pitcher by lowering the flap. So, we have learned this also. Now, let us move on to the next exercise children you can look in onto your reader that it is a higher order thinking skills like you have to fill in the blanks of the passage given below and find those words in the word maze. Here word grid is given you have to find the words and you have to write the correct words in the blanks given here. So, children you can pause the video and you can try writing the answers for the same, find the words from within the grid and write in the blanks here. So, once you are back we will discuss the answer for the same. So, hope you have all done. So, let us discuss plants do not dash food like animals, plants do not eat ok the answer is. They make their own what? They make their own food. The food is made in leaves of the plant. Leaves use carbon dioxide and what do they do? Carbon dioxide, water and what? Light 
from the sun to make food. So, I will repeat this leaves use carbon dioxide, water and light from the sun to make food. The dash absorb water, the roots absorb water from the soil. Air enters the leaf through tiny pores which is called as stomata. Okay? The excess amount of food is stored in different parts of the plant and in sugar cane plant it is stored in the stems. So, I hope you all got the answers for this also. Let us all take page number 34 and let us see another activity that Suman has written the following statements on how plants make food. Okay? Draw a smiley to mark each correct sentences. So, we have to mark correct sentences which is given here. Okay? So, children you can try to put that smiley on the correct sentences here. You read all the five sentences and try to do it. We will discuss the answer. So, let us see the answer for the same. Here, the first one is a correct answer. Only plants having chlorophyll make food, right? So, you have to make a smiley inside this circle. Okay? So, this is a correct answer. So, that is why I have written here true. Next is plants release ox oxygen in the into the air. Again, that is a true statement, right? You put a smiley inside the circle for the second one. Third one is only plants having green leaves make food. Is that true? Is that the correct statement? No. So, it is false. So, you do not need to put a smiley inside the circle. Next fourth one, plants use oxygen to make food. Is it true or a false statement? It is a false again. So, you do not need to put a smiley inside that. Leave that last, I mean 3 and 4. Okay? Fifth one, most plants make food in their leaves. So, that is again a true statement. So, you have to make a smiley inside the circle. Okay? We have to exclude this 3 and 4. I mean these two are not a true statement, it is a false statement. Now, let us see next activity that is value based question. What happens when many trees are cut down from a region? You have to tick the correct sentences from this. Read and you can tick the correct sentences. Okay? This you can do it as a homework. Now, let us see the next an activity again from the exercise children. Before you have two exercises, now again third one which you need to do it. What happens if a plant does not receive sunlight which you have to observe? You have to take two pots for that, make a hole at the bottom of each pot and fill them with the soil. So, about 15 mung or gram seeds in each. Okay? You, how many seeds you have to sow? 15. Okay? Moong or gram. Moong you can take or gram seeds you can take to sow in these two pots. Keep the pots in a sunny place. Keep the soil wet. Okay? Keep that soil wet and keep it in a sunny place where you get the sun rays. When the seeds begin to germinate, cover one pot with a thick paper bag. When it starts to germinate, what you need to do? Cover one pot with a thick paper bag. Open the co paper cover on the fourth day. Count the days, mark it somewhere. On the fourth day, open that paper cover. Compare the plants in two pots. You have to compare these two plants. One which, is, which was kept open and one which was covered with the paper bag. Did the absence of light affect the plants? You have to observe and write your reply for this. And you can again same uh, you can do is you can upload in the Microsoft Teams. Next one again it is a group work. Pulses such as gram and moong are rich in proteins we all know. Do they also contain starch? So, what you need to do take some gram flour and perform the iodine test with it which we did with the rice. I hope you all have tried. Record your observation and conclusion here. Discuss your conclusion with your family members or maybe your siblings. You can discuss and write it here. Okay? We have finished our chapter 3. So, learn whatever has been taught to you as well as do the activities and complete your notes on time. Write the dates on which you are writing. Write that date on the top for every uh, chapter. Note the answers for every questions also. If you have not done the exercise, please do complete it. Okay? So, we will meet up in the next class with a new chapter. Till then, thank you. <music>